Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students welcome to today's lecture In last few lectures we have been discussing the problem of harmonic oscillator just to uh, make a recap of what we have uh, discussed so far we would start with today we we'll start today's lecture by reminding you that we started with the point that we had the hamiltonian of the harmonic oscillator which we wrote as sum of the kinetic energy operator plus the potential energy operator if you remember while discussing this the solution of this hamiltonian instead of solving this problem in terms of position and momentum operator we expressed this hamiltonian in terms of a creation and annihilation operator where a plus and a minus operators when two new operators defined in terms of p the momentum operator and x the position operator a plus we call as creation operator a minus is the annihilation operator or step down operator is a minus step up operator is a plus using these two operators we defined the wave functions the eigen functions of the harmonic oscillator we said that if phi n is the eigen function of harmonic oscillator the eigen value is given as where en is in this way we dis we understood that so here n would go from 0 1 2 and so on so therefore the lowest allowed energy is half h bar omega the next one is 3 3 half h bar omega and so on and so forth these are the different eigen values of harmonic oscillator problem that we obtained the eigen functions phi n had a general formula which had a normalization constant a n a hermite polynomial expressed in the dimensionless coordinate rho and this hermite polynomial is the order of the hermite polynomial is given by this index n here and the third part is the gaussian function e rho minus rho square by 2 if you remember this rho is our we define this rho as the dimensionless coordinate which is simply the multiplication of beta and x where beta beta is defined as beta square is m omega divided by h bar where m is the mass of the oscillator omega is its angular frequency and h bar is the uh, planck's constant divided by 2 pi so this is the general formula of the harmonic oscillator eigen functions and this is the general formula for the harmonic oscillator eigen values we discussed in the last class as to how the function how these wave functions appear how the square of the wave function psi star psi the probability density of this wave corresponding to these wave functions appear at different values of rho one particular thing that we discussed in in previous earlier class that i would like to remind you is that these functions the phi n have definite parity that means that for a given value of n either our eigen function is an even function or it is an odd function but any eigen function of harmonic oscillator has a definite parity so what are the thing advantages or disadvantages uh, what are the advantages of having this definite parity is that when we have a if, if we have an even function suppose we want to integrate an even function from minus infinite to in uh, plus infinite and i have an even function here i simply can write in this integral as 2 times the same function if the function is even i can write this what is the change is the uh, the point that i am using here is that from minus infinite to plus infinite can be separated uh, into two regions one region from minus infinite to 0 the other region is from 0 to plus infinite since the function is an even function so therefore the area under that curve area under the curve of that uh, 
function is same when I integrate from minus infinity to 0 as it should be from 0 to plus infinite. So, therefore, I instead of writing from minus infinite to plus infinite, I am making it 2 times the, the in integral where the limits are now 0 to plus infinite. This relation we used in uh, previous classes. What if the function is instead of being an even function, what if the function is odd? Suppose I have this integral where the function is now actually an odd function. So, here I can see that this in limit is from minus infinite to plus infinite. I am writing down this as minus infinite to 0, the function is odd plus another the same function from 0 to plus infinite I am integrating. So, in this case I have two integrals from my one is from minus infinite to 0 another is from 0 to plus infinite, but since the function is odd. So, therefore, the value of the first term is going to be the negative of the value of the second term. Why is it so? Because we said that the, the function is an odd function. So, in that case the total integration when I integrate this function from minus infinite to infinite I get the result as 0, but when it is an even function I simply get twice the integ integration uh, result of the integration from 0 to plus infinite. These two relations we would use to discuss some important properties. In particular, we are going to discuss now what are the expectation values of position operator and momentum operator. To remind you, so when we say that we want to discuss the position operator, we simply write this. The expectation value of the position operator, we simply write this. What does this mean? This means if my function, my if the system exists in one of these eigenfunctions of harmonic oscillator, I have to evaluate this integral. So, where phi n is one of the eigenfunctions of harmonic oscillator and phi n star is its complex conjugate. Now, this the middle position here x is actually the position operator whose action is simply multiplication of this function by x. Now, we know that each eigenfunction of harmonic oscillator has a definite parity either it is an even function or it is an odd function. Suppose, we assume that this phi n happens to be an even function. If phi n is an even function, phi n star is also even function because this is simply complex conjugate of the function, but we already have seen that the eigenfunctions of this harmonic oscillator uh, problem that we obtained they were all real real eigen eigenfunctions. So, therefore, phi n is equ essentially equal to phi n star, but in any case since phi n is even phi n star is also even and what about x? x is an odd function. So, therefore, overall when I have these three functions I multiply this is an even function, this is an odd function and this is an even function. Together I see that this is an odd function. Now, since this is an odd function and I am integrating this from minus infinite to plus infinite, I know when I do this integration for an odd function we just discussed the result is going to be 0. So, what it tells me is that the expectation value of position operator for harmonic oscillator eigenfunctions is, is 0. What about the momentum operator? So, we want to uh, obtain the expectation value corresponding to the momentum operator. The rule is same, we write down the fol following integral. So, we have phi n star, I am now writing down the operator form of the momentum operator. So, here again phi n phi n star they again have definite parity. If phi n is an even function the first derivative of this function is going to be odd and since phi n is even phi n star is also going to be even. So, now phi n star is an even function this term phi n is even, but differentiation of phi n with respect to x 
is going to give me an odd function if i n is an even function. So, therefore, this is an even function and this is an odd function and together I have an odd function. If I take the other case where phi n is instead of being an even function is an odd function. So, it is the diff first differentiation I would get as an even function. So, if phi n is odd the d by d x of phi n is an even function and since phi n is an odd function phi n star is also an odd function. So, I have an odd function multiplied by an even function together I have an odd function. So, whether phi n is an even function or phi n as a, is an odd function the value of this the, 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 the function that we are integrating over here is going to be odd and if the function is going to be odd the result is also again going to be 0. So, we now what we uh, in these two exercises what we did is that we could obtain the expectation value or the average value of the position operator and the momentum operator of harmonic oscillator problem without actually calculating these integrals. How did we do this? We just used the beautiful properties of, of the harmonic oscillator eigenfunctions. The property corresponding to the fact that they have definite parity they are either even function or odd function. In the same way uh, we can also be, be in the same way we also can uh, try to obtain the expectation value of uh, potential energy operator expectation value of the kinetic energy operator. Uh, I would not do this, but I would uh, encourage you to carry out these exercises to to obtain a, uh, to get information about uh, what are the expectation value of this potential energy or kinetic energy operator of harmonic oscillator problem eigen functions. We would continue our discussion and another point what is known as the classical turning point. If you remember before we discuss the quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator we briefly discuss about the classical harmonic oscillator. We saw for a classical harmonic oscillator it is a kinetic energy and potential energy where sin square or cosine square functions which were oscillating in nature, but the total energy E is equal to k plus phi. So, the kinetic energy and potential energy were keep on changing its uh, the energy was keep on changing from one form to another form or kinetic energy to potential energy and vice versa while keeping the total energy of the system constant. What we to write this down we saw that we had in the for the for a classical harmonic oscillator we had this relation the total energy was this is equal to the sum of kinetic energy and uh, potential energy. Since we know the kinetic energy is always going to be a positive quantity kinetic energy is going to be greater than or equal to 0. So, therefore, we always we have this relation that the, tot, uh, the total energy is going to be greater than or equal to the potential energy of the harmonic oscillator. At most it can become equal uh, at the least it can be uh, the total energy become uh, can become equal otherwise in all other cases the to, uh, potential energy is always going to be lower than the uh, total energy. What does this mean? This, this simply means that if, if this is my harmonic oscillator potential uh, the potential energy uh, is, is shown here. Suppose I choose that this is the total energy of my system this is my uh, total energy. Now, this when the uh, harmonic oscillator has this kind of energy available. So, this x uh, in the x axis I have the uh, I am plotting x or the dimensionless coordinate r a rho uh, one of the uh, the two I am plotting. So, this is essentially uh, the dimension of the uh, problem. So, if the system has got this energy E it has got two components the kinetic energy and the potential energy. What are the potential energies? Depending on the value of x or rho my potential energy keeps on changing. So, if, if uh, my x is here there is the potential energy is 0 and therefore, the all the energy that the system has is 
is kinetic energy. As I go along, uh, as I uh, move along this displacement axis, I have for example, if I choose here, this is my potential, if this is my x, this is my potential energy and this is my potential energy and this amount is my kinetic energy. Similarly, if I choose this as my x, the displacement, this much becomes the potential energy and this is the kinetic energy. In this way, I, I can go along this displacement axis and see what is the contribution of kinetic energy and what is the contribution of potential energy to the total energy. If you notice, if I reach this point, if I reach this point, that means this value in the, in the displacement axis, at this point the potential energy becomes equal to the total energy. And in this case, what happens to the kinetic energy? That means, if my uh, the displacement is up at uh, uh, here, this value of displacement, all the energy of the system is potential energy. So, therefore, the kinetic energy is 0. So, when the kinetic energy is 0, so th th at this position the oscillator actually oscillates back. So, therefore, instead of going further in this displacement axis, the oscillator comes back, uh, comes in the reverse direction. So, I, I see a fall in the potential energy and then again I would increase the potential energy along this direction until I reach this point again. Again at this point also my total energy is potential energy, so therefore the kinetic energy is 0. So, these two region, these two points are called the turning points. this is one turning point, this is another turning point. So, classical harmonic oscillator is allowed to move to show displacement between this and this turn, turning point. Beyond these turning points, these are all forbidden region. For a classical harmonic oscillator, all these regions are forbidden. Why? Because when if the system has to go he, uh, up, up to this po uh, displacement up to this point, its potential energy becomes greater than the total energy and the kinetic energy becomes negative which is absurd. So, therefore, the, the classical harmonic oscillator is confined within the two turning points. Now, I would will take this discussion and use uh, the knowledge that we have obtained for the harmonic oscillator problem that we did uh, solve from quantum mechanics. So, the solution that we have now, we saw, okay, so to obtain some idea about the, uh, the relation between kinetic energy and potential energy, we saw that the energy of the system should be always greater than, total energy should be greater than the potential energy. And for a quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator, the total energy we obtain is as h bar omega n plus half and the potential energy was half k x square, where k is the force constant. If you remember, we defined k as, uh, we, we defined omega as k divided by m and therefore, k is m omega square. So, therefore, h omega h bar omega into n plus half is half instead of k I now write m omega square. So, if I simplify I keep this n plus half in this side and bring h bar omega to So, this 2 I can bring to the left side. So, I have 2 n plus 1 greater than or equal to m omega divided by h bar x square. And if you remember this m omega by h bar is my beta square. So, therefore, I can write this beta square x square. And since I have defined beta x as rho, so this becomes rho square. So, rho square is less than equal to 
2n plus 1 and therefore rho is should be less than or equal to 2n plus 1 square root and plus minus. So, what do I get here? I obtain he I get here the value of rho which is the dimensionless uh, coordinate. The value of rho what are the allowed values of rho for a classical oscillator? For a classical oscill oscillator in, the, in this case to, to make sure that the potential energy is less than uh, the total energy my rho that should be within these values. So, these are the, the plus and minus 2n plus 1 are the two turning points. This, this is what we define as the, the classical turning points and use the expression for the quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator. Now, for n equals 0 the lowest value for n I put n equals 0. So, this simply means for n equals 0 the, the draw the turning point should be simply n is 0 here. So, therefore, the turning points are plus 1 or minus 1. So, for is if this is if this is now my rho axis. So, this is 0 and this is plus 1 and minus 1. So, these are the two turning points for the lowest eigenfunction of harmonic oscillator. What this means? This means that if my harmonic oscillator if it if it were a classical harmonic oscillator it would actually be confined between minus 1 to plus 1. So, these are the classically allowed region and these are the forbidden regions because if it the system approaches uh, the region beyond these values of rho in that case the potential energy will become greater than the uh, total energy of the system. So, therefore, they are forbidden region, but interestingly what happens is that so, in this case what we find is that rho equals plus and minus 1 is that are the turning points. So, let us let us uh, write now what are the what was the functional form of the lowest Eigen function of the harmonic oscillator. So, this was 1 over pi this was the normalization constant e to the power minus rho square by 2. The probability density was so if i find out what is the probability density at rho equals 1 either plus rho is plus or minus 1 then you would see that and we know this quantity is not equal to 0 rather it has a finite value. What does this mean? This means that at the turning point at the classical turning point rho equals plus 1 or rho equals minus 1 the probability density of the uh, harmonic oscillator is not 0. That means, I have a finite probability uh, to uh, finite probability to find the system at the classical turning point that still does not violate anything, but if you do this calculation for any grip value rho equals suppose 1.2 or 1.3 then also you would see that this probability density is non-zero. So, that means if the probability density is non-zero beyond rho equals plus 1 or minus 1 for the lowest Eigen function that means what it, it simply means that in case of the quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator my system can actually go beyond the classical turning points. So, the regions that were forbidden for a classical harmonic oscillator my is now is now accessible for my quantum mechanical oscillator. So, how does the system uh, achieve this? So, these are the two turning points if you if you uh, if I plot the wave function or the square of it this should uh, look something like this at rho equals 0 the wave, the function uh, the has, has a maximum and then it uh, decays like a uh, Gaussian function uh, with, a, with a bell shape function. So, you see that at the turning point at the turning point 
instead of the wave function having amplitude 0, it actually has a finite amplitude. So, therefore, the probability of, uh, of finding the system at turning point is non-zero and what is more interesting is that even beyond this classical turning point, I have finite probability of finding this system. So, that means what has happened is that we express this uh, observation as something called tunneling which is a purely quantum mechanical phenomenon. Here it says that the potential energy the system explores the system explores the region beyond the classical turning point and that happens by the virtue of tunneling. If you remember the uh, story in the particle in one dimensional box, we had the potential which was something like this. At the boundary, the potential energy was simply becoming v equals infinite, v equals infinite and within the box the v equals 0. So, at this point at, ex at the boundary there was a sudden rise in the potential energy. So, therefore, this was a very hard potential. If you remember the solution of those problems, the particle in a one dimensional box at the two end of this box, the wave function and its probability was becoming 0. But in case of harmonic oscillator that is not the case. In case of harmonic oscillator, the potential is not an not an uh, not a discontinuous function, not a hard potential rather it is a soft potential that means it continuously varies along uh, the potential energy is a continuously varying fu function along displacement. And because of this soft nature of this potential that we see this quantum mechanical tunneling. Qua uh, quantum mechanical tunneling is a uh, is an important property of this harmonic oscillator uh, problem that we uh, discussed today. Uh, the, the remaining part of the uh, harmonic oscillator problem will uh, take on in the next class. Thank you for your attention.